Welcome to Maths Companion. The most beautiful geometrical shape in the nature is the circles. The wheel, which is considered as the greatest discovery of the science, is circular. In all branches of science, the study of circles is unavoidable. Most things in nature are circular. Today, let us start the fifth chapter, Circles. Before we start, let us recall some basic ideas which we have already learned. Fix a point O. Now join all the points which are at equal distance from this point O. Then we get a circle. Now mark a point on this circle. The distance between these two points is called the radius. That is the distance from the center to any point on the circle is called the radius. Now you can take a different point on the circle. If you join that point to the center, you get another radius. Like this, we can draw a lot of radii to this circle. Now let us extend the radius OA to meet the circle at another point. Then this line AC is called the diameter of the circle. And we know a diameter is the longest line that we can draw within a circle. You can see one more thing that OA is a radius and OC is another radius. That means the diameter equal to 2 times the radius. These are all the basic things which you have already learned. Now let us recall another point which you have learned in 8th standard. Consider an isosceles triangle. Let it be ABC. Suppose AB and AC are equal sides. Then if you draw a perpendicular from A to BC, it bisects the angle at A and the side BC. That means these two angles are equal and BD and CD are equal. Or we can say in any isosceles triangle, the perpendicular from the point joining equal sides to the opposite side bisects the angle at this point and the side opposite. This line is perpendicular to BC and it passes through the midpoint of BC. So AD is called the perpendicular bisector of BC. Now we have seen A is a point which is at equal distance from B and C. It is on this perpendicular bisector AD. Just like this, all the points which are at equal distances from B and C are on this perpendicular bisector AD. Suppose you have to find a point which is at equal distance from B and C on this side. You can extend AD and you can see that that point is also on this line AD. So we can say all the points which are at equal distances from B and C are on the perpendicular bisector of the line BC. Keeping all these things in our mind, let us go to the first section of our lesson circles and lines. Usually we draw a circle using a compass, but we can draw a circle using a bangle or a round lid. Somehow a circle is drawn. We don't know where the center is. How do we find the center of this circle? We know the distance from any point on the circle to the center is same. So let us mark two points on this circle. Let it be A and B. Then the distance from A to the center and the distance from B to the center are equal. So let us find a point which is at equal distances from A and B. For that, let us take the compass and put at A and draw an arc. Taking the same radius, put the compass at B and draw another arc. Mark the point of intersection. Now the distance from A to this point and B to this point are equal. Is it the center? No. We can see that it is above the center. Let us decrease the distance. Once again put the compass at A and draw an arc. Taking the same radius, put the compass at B and draw another arc. Mark the point of intersection. The distance from A to this point 
and the distance from B to this point are equal. Is it the center? No, it is below the center. It is difficult to get the center by doing like this. How can we find the center exactly and easily? There are so many points at the same distance from these two points and we know they all lie on the perpendicular bisector joining these two points. That is, they all lie on the perpendicular bisector of AB. Therefore, the center also lie on the perpendicular bisector of AB. So, let us draw the perpendicular bisector of AB to find the center. Let us take the circle and our points A and B. We have seen that the center lie on the perpendicular bisector of AB. So, let us join AB at first. Now, we have to draw the perpendicular bisector of AB. For that, put the composite A and draw arcs on both sides. Now taking the same radius, put the composite B and draw arcs on both sides. Mark the points of intersections, join them. This is the perpendicular bisector of AB. Therefore, the center lies on this line. But where is the center? There are so many points on this line. How can we identify the center? For that, let us mark another two points, C and D. The center of the circle lie on the perpendicular bisector of the line joining these two points. So, let us join these two points C and D. We know the center lies on the perpendicular bisector of CD also. Let us draw the perpendicular bisector of CD. The center lies on these two perpendicular lines. That means, the intersecting point is the center because this point lies on this perpendicular line and at the same time it lies on the second perpendicular line. In the meantime, we have seen that the perpendicular bisector of the line joining any two points on a circle passes through the center of the circle. Now, the line joining any two points on a circle is called a code. So, AB is a code, CD is another code. You can join any two points on the circle, you will get a code. And there are so many codes. Therefore, instead of the line joining two points on a circle, we can write code. And we can understand this as the perpendicular bisector of a code of a circle passes through the center of the circle. Or, the perpendicular bisector of any chord of a circle passes through its center. Now we know how to find the center of a circle exactly. The perpendicular bisector of any chord of a circle passes through its center. So draw two chords and draw the perpendicular bisectors. The intersecting point is the center. But remember one thing, when we take two chords, they should be non-parallel chords. Suppose we take parallel chords, what happens? Let us see. Let us take a circle. Suppose we want to find the center of this circle. We know we have to draw two chords and their perpendicular bisectors. Let me draw two chords. Here the two chords are parallel. Now let us draw the perpendicular bisector of this chord. This is the perpendicular bisector of this chord. Now, let us draw the perpendicular bisector of the second chord. Now, if you extend the perpendicular bisectors, you can see that they are the same line. So, we can understand only one thing that the center lies on this line and we cannot identify the center exactly. Therefore, we should take two chords which are not parallel. Let us summarize now. How can we find the center of a circle? Draw any two non-parallel chords. Draw the perpendicular bisectors. The intersecting point of the perpendicular bisectors is the center. Now, let us see how to find the center of a given circle.
Even when we just have a part of a circle, we can find the center and we can complete the circle. It is enough to draw two chords within the part of the circle and draw perpendicular bisectors to these chords. The intersecting point is the center. Let us see how to find the center of a part of a circle. Look at this picture. Let the triangle be ABC. Let it be an isosceles triangle with AC equal to BC. Let us remember the properties of isosceles triangles which we have learned in 8th standard and connect that to the circle. AC and BC are equal. Therefore, this is the point of intersection of equal sides. From this point, if a perpendicular is drawn to the opposite side, that line bisect the opposite side. That is CD bisects AB. Based on the isosceles triangle, this is the point of intersection of equal sides and this is the side opposite to this point. Based on the circle, this is the center of the circle and AB is a code. Therefore, we can say the perpendicular from the center of a circle to a code bisects that code. Similarly, we have seen that in an isosceles triangle, the line joining the midpoint of the base and the point of intersection of equal sides is perpendicular to the base. That is, CD is perpendicular to AB. Here, AB is a code, therefore D is the midpoint of a code and C is the center of the circle. Therefore, we can say the line joining the center of a circle and the midpoint of a code is perpendicular to the code. Let us recall what we have learned today. The perpendicular bisector of any code of a circle passes through its center. The perpendicular from the center of a circle to a chord bisects the chord. The line joining the center of a circle and the midpoint of a chord is perpendicular to the chord. We have also learned how to find the center of a circle when the circle is given. Now there is a homework. Draw a circle using a bangle or a round lid and find out its center. In the next video we shall discuss the remaining part till then bye.